Yo, what is up guys, Grim here, and in today's video, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a rundown on how I've been dealing with ailments and give you guys some ideas about how you might as well. So with the 3.15 changes, ailments are now a big deal. Not only have our, has our access been uh, kind of cut off to easy ailment immunity in the form of ascendancies, um, gear choices, and flasks, but they actually made ailments even more dangerous. Specifically, bleed, ignite, and poison, especially ignite, is incredibly terrifying. So as part of uh, moving through the, uh, the game and the end game, uh, I found myself really, really needing to come up with some solutions to these new problems that the developers have posed to us. Specifically, the ignite. I want to I want to touch on that one. So the ignite is um, kind of it comes from a lot of different monsters, but the primary one that was absolutely just blasting me was of course from the Elder Guardian, the Enslaver. So when you're doing Endgame, you will eventually encounter the Enslaver if you want to do um, the uh, invitations, and he applies an absolutely monstrous Ignite. It basically does three or four times your hit points, um, pretty much, uh, and he always is basically going to hit you with it eventually one or twice in the fight, so you just end up dying. Uh, and if you end up doing the invitation, this can get very dangerous very, very fast. Poison, to a lesser extent, is also a pretty big deal, but all of these ailments are present in maps, and I needed to come up with a solution because I was dying too much for my liking. Uh, you know, it's a problem when that happens. So, I decided to start looking into ways that I could get ailment immunity, um, and ways that I could kind of start countering these uh, mechanics in the game. Um, so, the first uh, kind of thought was that, you know, I was going to go for like, um, you know, an ignite immunity ring, um, but my build really doesn't have any sort of, um, kind of like, uh, capacity to use that, I need to use unset rings. Um, there is actually quite a lot of uniques though, as well as rares, which do give you ailment immunity. Uh, if you need freeze, for example, a lot of people are using dream fragments. Uh, you can also use Wonderlust or Brian King's Crown for the freeze. Um, there's a bunch of bleed immunity stuff. There's um, Death's Door, which is a pair of boots. Um, and you can also get implicits on rings, which uh, either come from corruptions. Uh, and you can also get implicits on belts as well, which give you like chill, freeze, bleed, and all sorts of stuff like that immunity as well. So if you're willing to give up a few slots here and there, you can scoop up a few uh, immunities um, by getting some of these more obscure items or using some uniques. Now, my build, unfortunately, um, is like a summoner build, and it doesn't really have any room for uniques like that. Um, so I need to come up with a different approach to start picking up ailment immunity uh, in the form of, um, you know, something that doesn't have gear. So I needed to do some investigation and I came across um, this node here, Anointed Flesh. Some people in chat recommended it to me. And man, it is definitely a good one. Um, so you can see here that uh, this is basically if you're a witch, there's different options. If you're, for example, an raider, you can get ailment immunity as well over as a raider if you choose to do so. We'll talk about that in a second though. Sorry, not a raider, a ranger. Um, so let's talk about the witch side of things. So if you're a witch or Templar, it's actually fairly easy to get ailment immunity, which is pretty good. Um, so if you're trying to get, let's say, ignite immunity, well, this is going to give you 5% reduced elemental ailment duration on you, but also you get 30% here for ignite and then an additional 15 um, ailment uh, duration on you uh, for anointed flesh. That's 50% reduced ignite duration on you from taking three passive points, right? So you know, 50% reduced duration is basically half damage. Um, if you were going to get ignited for 4 seconds and it was going to do 20,000, now you'll only be ignited for 10 seconds and it'll do 10,000, uh, which is definitely pretty good. Um, but we can take this a step further. So, if you go over into the Pantheons, um, there's actually a Pantheon called Soul of Aberath, which, you know, it makes it so you're unaffected by Burning Ground, which is pretty cool. Uh, but the main one here is when you upgrade it using Divine Vessels, you can become uh, Ignite immune um, because you can get an additional 50% ignite duration uh, reduction and that's 50 plus 50 equals 100 which means that it has no duration on you and you become immune to it um, which is pretty damn awesome. Now there's also a number of other things that you can kind of do. Um, you can pick up a uh, all of these modifiers on gear as well. For example, I think you can get 45% on your helmet as a mod. Um, so, you know, if you can pick up a helmet and you're used, just using a rare helmet anyway, um, then you can pick that up on there if you don't want to use the Pantheons. And you can definitely get a lot of ailment um, 
kind of duration reduction, even if you can only get to 95%, that pretty much fully mitigates the ailment. Um, and then you can, you know, be good to go. And that'll definitely be really, really nice. So I think that there is definitely counterplay uh, involved in the ailment system. And I actually had a lot of fun as a player, um, you know, being, you know, challenged and then having to come up with a solution. And this was a pretty good solution. And I feel pretty rewarded for, uh, for coming up with it because now I'm like doing the enslaver, for example, he hits me with the ignite. It doesn't even ignite me, man. So it's great. I don't have to do anything. I don't worry about it. And he's like a joke of a boss now. So I overcame that challenge. Now, um, of course, if you're playing a ranger, uh, there is a different kind of approach that ranger takes. You can see that it's basically mirrored. It's a different um, kind of thing on the tree. Um, they have uh, ailment avoidance. Um, so they have a chance to avoid the ailment, which in my opinion is a little bit less powerful. You either get hit or you don't. Um, but with the witch and the Templar side of things, well, you basically mitigate some amount of it every single time. Um, so I much prefer the witch side of things. Uh, but the um, the ranger one is good too, and you can get it to a point where you can fully mitigate ailments just the same. Um, so you can see here that this one has basically the same setup. Um, and when you combine that with, for example, the raider ascendancy, you become fully ailment immune. There's 50% from Raider, and that's 50% from these nodes. But you can make up that 50% on your gear as well, um, getting uh, ailment avoidance, which is definitely fully accessible. I believe that there's, um, there's crafts and also a few things that you can do there uh, as well for that. So pretty, pretty cool um, as we trade this guy his, uh, his shield. Big, big fan of that. All right, let's move on to the next point though. So let's say that you don't have access to ailment avoidance. Uh, you don't have access to reduction in ailment um, duration. Uh, what can you do? Well, there is a ton of new flask modifiers that got introduced to the game. And I wanna talk a little bit about that. So this is going to be a little bit less useful if your, flask, uh, if your build is heavily reliant on flasks, but let's get into it nonetheless, because I think a lot of builds, you know, don't really use flasks as much as they once did, and that this might actually be quite useful. So I mentioned that poison was another ailment that was absolutely destroying me. Well, I needed to come up with a solution for that as well. So the solution I came up with was actually to use the new currency along with the the um, the new ailment uh, immunity uh, on the flask so let's let's paint a scenario here so let's say that your character gets poisoned bang and you have this flask on here what will mechanically happen is that the flask will immediately trigger as soon as you get poisoned and remove it and give you ailment immunity for one second so that's kind of how it works and you have multiple uses of this flask. So traditionally, the gameplay of PoE has been to piano your flask over and over and over again, but I actually found myself unbound, unbinding this specific flask and just leaving it there. And it just, I don't use it, it's just there, and whenever I get hit, it just triggers and I'm immune to poison basically from now on. You could do this for freeze, you can do this for bleed, and it's pretty much, you know, easy peasy. The only downside is that you lose some damage potential and utility potential from not having flasks up, but because they've been nerfed, you know, it's not as bad as it once was, and you're not overly reliant on flasks as you once probably were. So yeah, pretty good. Let me explain this a little bit more though. So I've used a bismuth flask here for one specific reason, and it's also a chemist bismuth flask curing. So I had this on a different flask, which only had two charges, and I found myself wanting more charges. So I looked for the flask with the best use to charge ratio, and that actually is bismuth to my understanding. So you can see here that it uses 12 of 40 charges, meaning I get three uses um, from my chemist bismuth flask here, uh, which is pretty good. If I, you know, um, rolled it a little bit better uh, with a 20% reduction, I think I would have been actually able to get five with um, some points in the tree, but that's beside the point we can get three. Um, so basically I can get poisoned three consecutive times um, on a boss fight and I'll be just fine. Now, let's talk about how I got the trigger on this, uh, this flask here. So it says used when you become poisoned. So the way you get this is by using instilling orbs, which are the new currency, which are reasonably common. I'd say they're probably about as common as glass ball baubles. Uh, with the enkindling orb being a little bit rarer, but we won't talk about that in this video. So the instilling orbs, you can basically just roll it uh, on the flask. I think it took me about 30 to get poison, and I had ignite on a one previously, and that took me about three. Um, so it basically is just RNG. Um, but you know, overall, you can roll some pretty overpowered um, kind of flask, which make you basically ailment immune um, for most purposes. Uh, which is pretty damn strong. I would recommend it. And if you have a flask slot open, it is pretty easy and it makes your character a lot more um, powerful. Now, 
We're actually getting some buffs coming up as well for Flask, which is pretty good. So they're actually extending the immunity um, portion of this kind of mechanic to four seconds um, on some of the mods. So freeze, for example, will not just be one second, it'll be four seconds, uh, which is going to be incredibly strong. And basically, if you do have the setup on freeze, for example, you're going to be freeze immune for all intensive purposes. You will never be frozen, uh, which is definitely a welcome, welcome change. All right, let's finish it up here with uh, one additional change that they're making. Um, so they are, in fact, adding in a freeze immune uh, effect to um, Arctic Armor, which is really, really cool. And I'd like to actually see that maybe um, they add a few more of these effects in, and that would be really, really awesome. Uh, I, I really, really do like it when developers provide a problem, and then they provide the tools to overcome it, and the player can choose creative ways to do so. That is definitely very good game design, and you feel rewarded when you build a character that can cover all the bases. Um, and I do really, really appreciate uh, them adding that in, and I'd like to see a lot more of that, a lot more options for players to kind of do that. And one sneaky little one here on the end here, if you're a necromancer, is that you can actually create an animate guardian with sign of the sin eater, and it will absorb ailments which are hit on you and direct them at it, uh, which is pretty cool as well. If your animate guardian is tanky enough and durable enough, he can basically become ailment immunity as a necromancer too. Unfortunately, I don't have the gem sockets for that, but it is a pretty cool one otherwise. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and you learned uh, maybe a few things about ailments. Maybe you can implement some of these into your character and make it a little bit stronger and and that'll be really, really awesome as well. So that's it, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Plenty more on the way. And until then, cheers.